and welcome to another episode of the Verde Valley Experience. I'm your host, Jennifer Cohen. Thank you so much for joining us today. As per usual, wonderful time of year. When is it not in the Verde Valley? Lots of wonderful things happening. There's a film festival coming up. Oh my gosh, I love film festivals. Of course, the night sky right now is absolutely glorious. Star watching is glorious. So of course, we have guests that are gonna talk about things like that. Our first guest today is Helen Stevenson. She's the executive director and founder of the Prescott Film Festival. Amazing film festival, incredible films. Lots of trailers available for you online. I've already watched several of them. I'm totally hooked to have to see these films. There's over 50 of them. It's really amazing. So Helen's going to tell us all about that. That's happening June 8th through the 16th. So you've got plenty of time to catch that. I don't want to hear any whining. And then we're going to have with us J.D. Maddie. We're so lucky. J.D. Maddie, a very familiar name with the astronomers of the Verde. It's incredible what we have with our night skies here, of course, with our dark sky cities. Now J.D.'s going to fill us in on what's going on in the club all the different star parties that they're having, memberships, how you can get involved with that. Great information for you there. And then we're going to do a double take with him. We're going to have a second segment where he's going to talk about what we can see in our night skies right now. We're at the end of spring, the beginning of summer. Great stuff is happening. Have you looked outside at night? It's phenomenal. JD's going to tell us what we're looking at, which is super, super helpful. Then we're going to finish out our show today with the wonderful duo, the Electric Swamp Poets. Yes, amazing. Good stuff. Don Witcher and Chris Berry. You know, they were nominated for the best new blues album of the year, two years running. Yeah, and we're so lucky to have them in the studio. I cannot wait to finish out the show with them. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. The lovely and talented Helen Stevenson, the executive director, founder of Prescott Film Festival. Yes, thank How you. How many years now has Prescott Film Festival been going? This will be our ninth annual. Excellent. Yes. That's great. How many years have you been involved? Um, from the beginning, because wow. yeah, it was, uh, I founded it, so yeah. Excellent. Yeah. What, what brought you to that? Um, I was a filmmaker in Los Angeles and moved to Prescott because, mm. you know, it's mm -hmm. nice and cool and it's no traffic. Um, and I liked a smaller town. And there was no really art film there. And it was, I saw it as a void. And if there's a void, you try to fill it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good choice. And you have filled it with the most amazing films. Oh, thank if you. you go to the website, PrescottFilmFestival.com, I love all your little clips and things where you can go and see trailers or snippets of the film. I'm, I'm hooked. I'm hooked on everything. <laughs> yes. I want to see everything. Oh, yes. I'm sure you, The Wild Ponies is the mm -hmm. one that's probably hooked you the most. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful film. Um, it's a brand new film, and we're just really thrilled to have it at the beginning of its festival run. Mm -hmm. How do you pick all these films? I've, I looked through them. If you look through the list of what there are, incredibly delicious and rich films. How Thank did you, you pick those? Well, we have 60 movie reviewers, and my husband, actually he's a software designer, and he built a system for us to use to load the films in, score the films, and then you calculate where, where they are on their scores. Hmm. And so then those 60 people kind of winnow them down. And then the programming uh, staff, that's me and two other people, uh, we look at all the A's and B's, and then you start to think how to make a balanced festival. Like you can't have all foreign films, can't have all documentaries. You try to have a really nice complement and a, a well-rounded festival. Yeah. Uh, and we always want a horse film because those just do the best. Well, so. sure, here yeah. out west, horses oh, are course. close to everyone's heart. And, and even yes. if they're not, they're beautiful to watch and mm. films about them are always heartwarming and yes. very engaging. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm, that's so. amazing, nice, well-balanced. So you don't think about that, a balanced festival. Mm -hmm. What yeah. would you say is the most popular thing? Oh, the horse movies are always mm. the most popular thing. And this year we have the Wild Ponies of Chinoti. If you're from back east, that word just... Chinkatee. Chinkatee. Oh, okay. It just falls off the mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, which is the, the little children's book, The Misty of Chinkatee, it kind of a, is makes people aware of that. That's how I knew that that thing existed, was that those mm -hmm. wild ponies existed. And then it was just so intriguing to see that that, uh, that group of ponies and that island, they still exist, and those ponies and the roundup and the sell of those ponies supports their fire department. Mm -hmm. So it was really fascinating. Yes, it is a fascinating story. Of course, I read it. I was there. Oh. My mom took me on a trip there, so I've been there. I've oh. seen them. They're real. Oh, it's, nice. it's really cool. So now with this wonderful film about them, yes. everyone this side of the Mississippi yes. can check them out. That's great. Yes. What are a couple of the films that really strike you this year? Our opening night film is A Boy Called Sailboat. And 
it's I like really core independent films. I like the quirkiness, I like the fun, uh, I like some things that are unique, and J.K. Simmons is in this film. And um, having a star like that in this wonderful uh, story about a little boy who finds, he calls it a little guitar, it's a ukulele on the side of the road, and his grandmother's sick and she asks him to write a song for her to make her feel better. So he teaches himself how to play the guitar and there's all these other quirky things going on mm -hmm. around them. I love that film. And I love the pretend one. <clears throat> the pretend one is our closing night film. And it's, um, it's another quirky one. It's this, this woman has this wonderful little bits of humor, emotional relationship with this man, and then you find out it's her imaginary friend from childhood. Hmm. <laughs> so, wow. yeah, so those That's different amazing. things. Um, Fail State is another documentary we'll have in the middle of the festival, and that's about um, what for-profit uh, for colleges do. Hmm. And how uh, it talks to some of the people that went through and paid the really high fees and the high tuition to go through that, those colleges, and then find out that the, you know, their diplomas are not worth much because the colleges aren't accredited. Mm. So that was, of course, very dear to my heart. So. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, besides having 50 films, you're also having eight workshops. the The festival stretches over nine days, and there's a lot going on in those nine days. Yes, yes. And two of the workshops have screenings with them. The workshops are all free. Um, they're presented by the Film and Media Arts Program at Yavapai College, which is right over here on the Verde Valley campus. Um, and there's the two that have, uh, one of them has a sociological uh, connection and uh, the, the instructor is going to talk about how films can change the world and bring things, uh, give people an awareness of different things that are happening. We kind of live in our little insular world in the small town, Yavapai County, um, but there's a big world out there and some of the things happening we need to know about. And so she talks about how, how film uh, can, can help accommodate that. Um, and then another one at the, the 14th and 15th, the Thursday and Friday of the festival, um, Bruce Dorn and John De Dios and one other person, they're professional filmmakers in Arizona, um, they're going to do a two-day workshop, nine to five, and it's free, and it's hands-on, mm. like a boot camp. Whoa. And Bruce, uh, Bruce does films for... Um, Oh, Canon and uh, Airy and he does uh, commercials and he mm. does regular films and all this kind of experience he has. Uh, he's just an amazing human being and he just was willing to do this for two days for us. So it's wow. really nice to have that. So th that would be, you know, plan to come and stay two days and mm. do that Thursday and Friday and then, you know, do the weekend of films. Wow. So, yeah. And if you, you can choose what part of the festival you want to take part in. There's several versions of passes, right. depending on what you want to do. You want to explain those? Yes. We have the Platinum Pass, which is everything, and that includes the wine tasting and the gourmet dinner that's in the middle of the week, um, and all the films, and access to the VIP director's loft. And that's where the filmmakers kind of hang out, but if you just want to buy a Platinum Pass, you can go hang out with filmmakers, and it's kind of fun, mm. and coffee and you know snacks and stuff. So that's kind of nice. Um, an all-movie pass is I don't care about anything but movies. I'm just going to go see the movies, and that's it. Then you can get an all-movie pass. Um, you can do a weekend pass, like, okay, I just want to go for the first weekend and do the wine tasting, and then I'm, I'm ready, I'm done. Or you can do the second weekend, which, okay, I'm coming for that free workshop for two days. I want to uh, see all the films and take part in all the things that are happening on the second weekend. So that's, and you can buy individual tickets, of course. Well, there you so. go. That definitely covers it all. Yes. <laughs> you want to see one or 50? I'm sure you can't see all 50. <laughs> Probably cram in 20. Uh, you think if you went back to back to back to back to back? You could see all 50 you because could, we oh don't, the films, we don't compete with each other's oh, films. Oh, that's huge. Yes. So that's her huge. audience was just like, I can't decide whether to oh go to this gosh. film or that film. And I just consistently got that feedback and it's like, okay, well, we're not going to compete with ourselves. Oh my gosh. So. Now, another thing that you're doing in conjunction with the festival is the high school film competition. Tell us a little bit yes. about that, Helen. Yes, that is wonderful. And that's also co-sponsored by the Film and Media Arts Program at the college. And they, uh, 
the deadline is actually the 18th, so that's the deadline will probably have passed by this time, but we'll do it next year. Um, but the prizes are scholarships for mm. film and media arts program classes, $1,000, $500, and $250. So mm. next week I'll be looking at all those high school films wow. and we'll be programming the high school fest. So. Oh, and the high school fest after that. It, well, it's Maybe. during the festival and it's mm. part of the free workshops and we wanted to make it free because parents want to come and their families want to come and you know it's really neat and I've, I've seen one submission from Phoenix so far and uh, really awesome mockumentary so Ooh. I'm really excited. That's wonderful. Yeah. What an amazing thing to add to that. So parents, kids, if you want to get involved for next year, you better start filming now. I know how long yes. it takes to m film a movie. Start now. Yes. And if they go to PrescottFilmFestival.com, is there info about the high school Mm -hmm. There is. One okay. of the slides, you just press the button. On. Okay, excellent. Of course, there's a list of all the film passes. There's a list of all the films of different yes. parties. Of course, there's the, the cabaret parties. There's a gourmet dinner. There's wine tastings. It's everything. You've done a very good job. Thank I you. I really appreciate the work that you're doing, Helen. Oh, thank you. This is an amazing film festival, thank and I'm you. very excited. So thank you for coming on the show and talking oh, about it. You're welcome. The Prescott Film Festival, 50 films, June 8th through the 16th. Go to PrescottFilmFestival.com. We're talking with Helen Stevenson, the executive director and founder of the Prescott Film Festival. And we'll be right back with more of the VVEs. Don't go away. Fabulous views and unmatched quality with efficiency in mind. Just announced, CNB Construction is the only contractor ever to win the EPA's coveted Indoor Air Plus Leaders Award four years in a row. These Energy Star certified homes provide unparalleled energy efficiency, comfort, durability, and indoor air quality. CNB Construction is currently building at Gray Fox Ridge and Crossroads at Mingus. CNB Construction, locally respected and nationally recognized. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost a hundred years and a hundred patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services in the Verde Valley. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at gettleshdm.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's. Building a home, remodeling, or need furniture for the holidays? Time to order is now. Amish Home Decor offers furniture for every room in your home in many different woods, stains, and styles. We even offer patio furniture and mattresses. If you don't see what you're looking for on the showroom floor, just ask. We buy from a hundred different Amish families located at the corner of Glassford Hill and Highway 69 in Prescott Valley. Amish Home Decor is the place to buy tomorrow's antiques. And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. We're now here with J.D. Maddy, a household name here in the Verde Valley. Right, J.D.? <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Astronomers of Verde Valley, former president now. Correct. Is that correct? How many correct. years were you president? Quite a few. Yeah. yeah quite a few. You've yeah. retired now. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying, trying to take it a little easier now. <laughs> yeah, they kept you really busy. And still doing a lot of viewing, though. Mm -hmm. We still had a lot of star parties going on, mm -hmm. still did a lot of park events, uh, All right. school events, Library Excellent. events and everything. All right, well, we'll line us up. What's okay. happening? Well, uh, we're starting off um, uh, this weekend, this Saturday evening, which would be May 19th, mm -hmm. uh, at the Rosanico Park in Camp Verde. So uh, a year, maybe two years ago now, Camp Verde built a brand new fancy library. Uh, really nice if you haven't been there. And right next to it, uh, they've christened a park called Rosanico Park. I believe that was a family that previously had owned the park. I don't know. They may have donated it. But they've also built us a really nice uh, viewing area there with uh, concrete spaces for our telescopes, as well as a ramada there. There's a picnic ramada right on the river. There's a large ramada for doing presentations and daytime events as well as nighttime events as well. But uh, this Saturday, a uh, good time to be there would be about uh, sunset at Rosanico Park and then after we'll be uh, showing the night skies to everyone. Mm. Wonderful. Yes. And yes. these events that you do are free. Yes. Star parties. Yes. For the most part, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, with some, and I'll mention, there there's okay. can be a charge if it's a state park or a national park, okay. possibly. Well, there you go. So, All right. Yes, so that yes, covers yes. this weekend. What do we have coming yes, up? Yes, yes. Uh, well, our meeting then is um, 
May the 26th, and also the public's always welcome to come. And we sometimes have speakers. We always have a lot of interesting things about what's up in the sky, mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in the world of astronomy, uh, new missions that are being launched into space and such, and some of the uh, very unique uh, um, pictures of uh, the data that they've been collecting well, as well. That, so that's what happens at a meeting of the astronomers yes, at Purdue yes, Valley. Yes, yes, yes. We don't oh. get too technical. We try to keep it lighthearted, and so the beginner as well as the advanced astronomer uh, will understand it and get something out of Very it good. too. So. And anyone who's interested in maybe taking part in the club can just come to one of these monthly meetings? Sure, exactly. All right. mm -hmm. Good to know. Well, they we could come to one of our star parties and mm -hmm. kind of see what goes on at a star party and meet some of the members and such to, if they don't feel like they want to really rush right into a meeting. Sure. <laughs> now, how would you describe to a, to a newbie what the Astronomers of Verde Valley is? Well, we're a group of, uh, I think our ages range from uh, about 15 years old up to 80 plus now and a variety of uh, pasts with uh, all of our, our club members some were engineers some uh, were housewives some were school teachers just a wide variety of people but one thing we do share and that's a love for the night sky and viewing the night sky mm -hmm. oh that's great okay yeah. so we have the meeting coming up and they happen yes, yes, yes. once a month on yes. the same day? What day? Do we uh, well, right now, uh, our meetings through November will be the fourth Saturday of the month. Okay. That kind of correlates with the uh, uh, full moon of the month or oh. close to it. Well, isn't that convenient? Because when the moon's really full, it's it's really tough to see some of the faint fuzzies we like to enjoy with our telescopes. Well, that's true. Where do you meet? Uh, at the Verde Valley Medical Center, Conference Room B at 6.30 okay. p.m. Okay, fourth Saturday of the month right Correct. now through November. Correct. Uh, Great. Correct. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. What else we got coming up? And um, let's see, coming up uh, on June the 2nd, uh, we have a star party at Red Rock State Park. Ooh. Now, they're at the uh, Ramada there, uh, where the big picnic Ramada is. Now, at that program, we will be doing a PowerPoint presentation right at sunset, uh, and then wait, and, and the PowerPoint will last 30, uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, and then it'll be dark enough to go out to the telescopes and start looking at the wonders of the night sky. Mm -hmm. uh, now, they're uh, limited to their uh, attendance there. I think they have a maximum of 80 folks, and we sell it out just about every time. So if wow. you want to go to the Red Rock, uh, State Park Star Party, uh, you'll need to make a reservation with them. Okay, good to know. And we also have one uh, later this year, uh, September 8th also. Mm -hmm. And then occasionally we'll do what's called Moonlight Hikes. Uh, the park uh, has uh, uh, the Moonlight Hike program where they'll actually take uh, the hikers up on three different trails and usually uh, there's about 75 folks, 25 in each group, and they'll hike hike back up while it's still light and then right at sunset they'll be coming back down and then we'll have the telescope set up to look at the full moon and, and maybe some of the other things in the night sky as mm, well. Very um, pleasant way to spend the evening. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely fun. And then if you don't mind uh, going up to where it's a little cooler at Sunset Crater a national Monument, just north of Flagstaff. Uh, we'll have our first summer star party there on June the 9th. Mm. And that's a series of star parties. We'll also be having one uh, July 7th and also August 11th. Now, um, that's a wonderful place to start. Oh is gosh, it's really yes. dark there. Wow. Uh, one of the darker areas uh, that are close by that we have to view the night skies. Sure, and nothing and in your way either. Exactly. And everyone says, well, what about Sunset Crater? It's pretty big, but it, honestly, you won't. Even, once it's dark, you won't even know it's there. <laughs> wow, it's so, got to be phenomenal viewing stars time. there. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, what it a is, great certainly. place to have parties. Certainly and again, worth, throw us the dates. Yeah, yes, that was Sunset again. Crater will be on June 9th, uh, July 7th, and also on August 11th. Okay. And then, uh, so if you don't want to go too far away, we have a uh, what's called the Sedona Star Party in conjunction with the Sedona Dark Sky Festival, mm. and that will be at Pussy Ground Park on August 4th. And so that will be, a, I believe that event is free to the public. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be a great event uh, to uh, go to as well. And some of the things we'll be uh, seeing are the planets are rising up now. Uh, we'll be basically saying goodbye to the winter Milky Way and hello to the summer Milky Way hmm. as it rises up in the sky. Wow. Do you go to all these events? Yes, yes, wow. yes, we do. Um, probably two dozen to three dozen uh, public events a year. 
That's a lot. Throughout the state, yes. That's yes. a lot. We travel as far as Alamo Lake State Park doing an event there wow. in November, and then we also go to Karcher Caverns a couple of times a year for events there in the spring and the fall. That's fantastic. So, so there's travel, there's excitement. Yes, yes, yes. There's stars and planets and Milky Ways and comets. Everything. That's, what a neat club. Yes, yes. That's, that's fun. That's, that's fun. great. And we're, and we're a social club, too. Uh, a lot of times when we go out to stargaze on our club events, what we call our dark sky weekends, uh, we'll have a pot of chili, a pot of stew, you know, and people bring things to share as well. Oh, so, an informal potluck. Yes, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, great. So that's great. You get camaraderie and you get the cosmos. Yes, all exactly. All mixed into one. <laughs> you know, chili is kind of like the Milky Way when you think about it. Um, <laughs> Stuff floating around is, everywhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was reaching there. I was totally reaching. How long have you been involved in other than I know you were been president forever, but Right, right. How many years have you been doing this? Oh, practically all my life. Mm. Um, I I'm telling my age now, but I saw the Sputnik satellite go over. Right. <laughs> and that was many years ago, and that's what really got me fascinated with astronomy. And then uh, my mom and dad kind of saw that in me, so they would take me out and uh, we'd lay out in the yard and watch all the meteor mm -hmm. showers. I lived kind of out in the country, and mm -hmm. that was before light pollution was an issue uh, sure. out here. So uh, just uh, done it pretty much all my life. Wow, that's fantastic. It's what, wonderful. A, what a better way to spend the evening. Absolutely. <laughs> wonderful for your parents to have encouraged that in oh, you. There sure, you go, parents. Sure, parents sure. of small children, encourage. See the good things you can encourage. Check out astroverde.org, astroverde.org. Great website. Information on everything that JD has mentioned. All the different parties, all the different events, the moonlight hikes, things that we can see. Speaking of things that we can see, JD is not going to leave that chair. We're going to be right back and talk about all the great things that we can see in the night sky now that we're coming out of spring and into summer. It's absolutely glorious, so don't go away because we've got lots more of the Verde Valley experience coming at you in just a few. Hi, this is Greg at Verde Solar Power. You know, Arizona has lots of clean, renewable sunshine, and we want to help you take advantage of it with our quality solar installations, and we offer to beat any written offer on a residential solar electric system. So bring us your electric bill and let us show you how solar power will save you money. We're located conveniently here in the Verde Valley and are dedicated to helping the valley go solar. So remember, the energy solution comes up every morning. Lease it now with Sears Hometown and Outlet. Right now is the perfect time to take a closer look at leasing. Leasing's a great way to get more. Choose from thousands of items throughout the store and online. Pick out at least $199 worth of items to start a lease and take home the brands you love with no credit required. It's simple. Take home what you want, when you want it, and leave satisfied. Come see me, Lisa Peterson, your local store owner and our great team at the Cottonwood Sears hometown store. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride! And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. We're sitting here with J.D. Matty, who is the former president <laughs> of the Verde Valley Astronomers. Now, it's a wonderful club. In case you haven't picked that up, club for amateur astronomers, students, photographers, astronomy enthusiasts of all sizes, ages, and shapes. Really, really great. Now, J.D. is going to fill us in on what, when we look outside, what we're going to see now. Because sometimes I look out there and I go... I wish I knew what that was. <laughs> There's some stuff. I have an ongoing argument with my daughter about something in the night sky right now mm -hmm. that I would be so happy if you would clear up. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Great. And you're more than likely talking about Venus, the planet Venus. Uh, if you look west, uh, just a little northwest, right after sunset, you'll see this big, huge, bright, blazing object uh, in the sky. Looks like it's almost on fire uh, right over Mingus Mountain. So depending on where you are, uh, it can set as late as 9 p.m. For me, I'm up next to Mingus Mountain, so it sets about 8 p.m. for me. But uh, it's, Venus has been in the process of coming around from the backside of the sun, so we'll be able to see it probably for the next uh, couple of months pretty easily before it rapidly heads down uh, uh, out of our sight then. Mm -hmm. But uh, it will be the brightest thing in the night sky 
probably uh, until it disappears in, in the next few months. Fantastic. So Venus right now is about 120 million miles away. So it will get, apparent size will become a little larger as it gets a little closer to us. Mm. And as it starts to make the turn around its orbit, it will become somewhat uh, crescent shaped. Uh, it's very, very similar to our uh, crescent shaped moon. Wow. So, and what's kind of uh, interesting, as it becomes uh, less illuminated, it becomes brighter because it's much closer to us as well. Hmm. So that's probably uh, been, I'm sure there's been a lot of 911 calls. Oh my. What's that UFO yes. over right. Mangus Mountain? Yes. So oh, it is. It is that bright. Yes, it is. That bold, that huge already, and you're saying it's going to get bigger. Yes. Mm. And through a small telescope or binoculars, you might see it as just not quite perfectly round right now, about 95% illuminated. And there again, mm. as it traverses over the next few months, it'll become more and more gibbous and then crescent illuminated. So wow. It's kind of fascinating to watch the cycle of that. Oh my gosh, I bet. Yeah. Does it have a color? Does it show us a color? No, uh, Venus is is surrounded in very, very thick clouds. Mm. Uh, so it's mostly just white. Now, as it gets lower on the horizon, you're looking through a lot of atmosphere. So if you happen to look at it through binoculars or a small telescope, it may uh, be somewhat prismatic because mm. of the atmosphere refracting mm. the different different wavelengths of light. Uh, you might see some blues and some reds and, mm. and uh, some oranges in it. Pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. But uh, once it sits, don't fret. There's plenty more to look at. Uh, turn around and look uh, pretty much uh, due a little bit to the southeast, and you'll see another big bright ball in the sky, and that's the planet Jupiter. Mm. So Jupiter is at its best right now. So over the next two weeks, if you have a chance, go out and take a look at Jupiter. Uh, it's best seen uh, between 9 o'clock and, and 1 a.m. when it's much higher in the sky, so you have much less atmosphere to look through. But you can watch what we call the dance of the moons. Even over a, a one night's viewing, you'll notice that the four Galilean moons that are easily seen with a, a small telescope, sometimes uh, steady binoculars, uh, they they move night to night, wow. and also the great red spot can be seen as well, uh, which is diminishing in size, but it can still be seen in small telescopes. Hmm. And also the cloud bands, those equatorial cloud bands, the big storms that that surround Jupiter, uh, they can be easily seen in just about uh, anything: binoculars, a small telescope, or even a large telescope. Wow! So it's pretty fascinating. Absolutely. If, um, if you have access to YouTube, you may want to go to YouTube and uh, do a search for Neil deGrasse Tyson. And he just he becomes a weatherman on this little video he does. It's through through a, a series he does called People of Earth, and he does one on the Jupiter's red spot and the effect that causes that. Huh. And uh, he makes a pretty interesting weatherman. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson. Yes. Okay, yes. YouTube that. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes, and, and watch that. Fun. It's pretty. Pretty oh, interesting to watch. Talk about the red spot there. Yes, okay. yes, yes. That's so, um, uh, of course, if you want to stay up a little later right now, of course, next month it'll be more favorable. But if you stay up a little later, you will see Saturn rise up. Uh, just mm. before midnight. And Saturn with its rings, and there's also some moons that you're able to see that uh, orbit around Saturn. And I would say of, of any of the objects that most people look at in the telescope, planet-wise, they'll say Saturn is their favorite huh. because you can see the rings and such and a little bit of detail within the ring system. And sometimes you can see a little some cloudy areas uh, on the surface of uh, Saturn as well as what you can see on Jupiter. Mm, so it's pretty true. fascinating. Yeah. And then for the really f late late, late folks, uh, if they stay up another hour or so, Mars will actually be rising. So you have a chance, if you stay up late enough, you'll see uh, not only Venus in the early evening, you'll be able to see Jupiter, uh, Saturn, and Mars. Wow. Now, a couple of interesting things to touch on uh, with Jupiter is right now Jupiter's in the constellation of Libra, Libra the scales or the balance. Now, early astronomers, uh, some early astronomers had the, uh, constellation of Libra actually attached to Scorpius 
as the claws of the scorpion. Hmm. So let's see, I have a date here. Uh, this is over oh, the end of May, so Memorial Day weekend. If you go out, have a look with uh, binoculars or a small telescope at Jupiter, it's going to pass right by a, a multiple star system or a double star system called Zubin el Ganubi, which uh, translates <laughs> to the Southern Claw. Say that one more time. Zubin el Ganubi. Oh my gosh. I hope this. How do you spell that? Z <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, it's, it's Zubin el Ganubi. Gnubi. Gnubi. Oh yes. my God, I love that. And uh, of course, if you want to take a look at the northern claw, it's Zubin el Shamali. Oh. So um, we have our Arabic astronomers uh, uh, ah, named name those uh, particular Excellent. stars. But uh, Jupiter will be passing and just almost kissing this multiple star system of uh, Zubin el Gnubi. So it'd be worth uh, there again on Memorial Day weekend to go out and have a look at it. Um, let's see, Saturn, uh, as it rises, about 11 p.m. right now, still pretty far away. It's about 863 million miles away, but mm. still very easily to see the uh, ring system and such. And it'll be at its best at the end of June. Wow. So if you, from now and th actually probably through the end of July, even into August, Saturn is just going to be fantastic to, wow. to view. That's great. Yeah. You're so full of information, J.D. Really appreciate it. We could do like a two-hour nonstop show <laughs> just on you, I do like to talk to I us. know, <laughs> and it's wonderful, and you do such a good job. Check out astroverdi.org for more information. It's absolutely full of it, bottomless, never-ending. We know we've piqued your interest. You want to get involved, astroverdi.org, if you want to get involved in the Astronomers of Verde Valley, if you want to go to one of the monthly meetings, the fourth Saturday that happens, if you want to go to any of the star parties, it's all on the website, astroverdi.org. Check it out. We'll be right back with more of the experience, so don't go away. A1 Supreme Moving is your Verde Valley hometown movers. Trust your valuables to a family-owned and operated company with 31 years of moving experience. A1 Supreme Moving offers packing services, fully licensed and bonded. Your belongings are insured at full replacement value. Ask about teacher and vet discounts, as well as redecorating and holiday prep services. A1 Supreme Moving has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. For Supreme service, call A1 Supreme Moving at 634-0963. We Organize You serves the entire Quad City area and the Verde Valley with custom cabinetry, including kitchen, garage, laundry, custom home office, and closet systems. Stop by their showroom in Chino Valley to see how they can make your home more convenient and valuable. It's time to get reorganized with We Organize You. For more information, go to weorganizearizona.com. That's weorganizearizona.com. Cottonwood Public Library, sitting with Ryan Bigelow, who is the library manager. Thank you for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming to the library. That's great. We're sitting in the homework and tutoring room. It's so cute. Hey. The library is massive. There's so much going on in here. I, I bet we haven't got a clue about half of what happens in here. And since I'm so new, I don't have a clue about what half of what's <laughs> going on here. But Too modest. I, I really do think that we have a lot of services, and we're a great resource for a lot of folks who maybe just don't know that we're here. Uh, maybe they don't, haven't been to the library lately, kind of think of a library as just books, mm. um, you know, but we want, we want to definitely tell people that we're more than just books. We have all kinds of programs. Uh, we invite all kinds of different organizations to come in and run their programs here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great place to be a safe space um, and, you know, we're, we've got computers everywhere. So there's, there's something for everybody here. Okay. So it's time to think outside the box as far as a library is just books. You've got um, the summer is coming up. 
So what Absolutely. kind of summer programs are you going to have? Well, the big one for us is the summer reading program. So we have both a youth summer reading program and an adult summer reading program. So again, for all ages, you can participate. Of course, we want to create lifelong readers. Uh, so we, we really want to emphasize the kids. We want to get out into the schools and, and tell them about the program. Um, essentially, it's you track your reading. Uh, as you gain points and get to various levels, we have different prizes, mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of do um, different events throughout the program. This year, it is Libraries Rock is the theme. So there's a music theme. Um, we're hoping to gather some folks to play some instruments. I know we have some uh, Celtic music coming through. We're going to try to get a, a DJ to come through. Um, and we're looking at uh, kind of an open mic night for the teens. Wow. So uh, a lot of different stuff here at the library. That's amazing. You wouldn't think a library would have something like that. Open mic night at the library. Well, we want to, we want to rethink what the library is, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think traditionally a library has been, shh, mm. you know, be quiet. Um, uh, we, we don't want, you know, we're not going to try to disturb others, but at the same time, um, we're, we're here to educate and promote whatever we can. And sometimes mm -hmm. that makes noise. Uh, yeah. You know, we have movie Mondays here where we show movies um, and that's not the traditional library thought, mm -hmm. um, but, but we have a great turnout for Movie Mondays. Well, that's wonderful. And is it, how many times a month is Movie Mondays? Movie Mondays is once a month mm -hmm. for adult movies and then once a month for youth movies right. too. So we have a variety. Oh, very cool. So yeah. it's not just little cartoons. No, no. We have, <laughs> very, real we have uh, adult films um, uh, that are, that are try, we try to be fairly serious in content. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're educational. Um, we have to be careful about what we say and promote because our licensing restrictions. Mm. Um, but we do have great movies coming up, I can tell okay. you that. So once a month, there's the movies for the kids and, and the rest of Now, uh, PG-13 is probably about we're where probably we're going to draw the line. Out, you know, um, I don't think it's illegal for us to show a rated R movie, but we're, 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 we're staying in PG-13. Okay. Yeah. It's still a library yeah, after yeah, all. You yeah. know? <laughs> what other sorts of underutilized programs do you have here? Um, I, I really want people to know that you know, we're moving forward. Uh, we have an app on the phone called Libby. Um, so you can do eBooks through an mm. app, a mobile app, whether on your tablet or on your uh, smartphone, um, that has also has an audiobook function. So uh, we were talking earlier that you know if you're walking, um, you can listen to your books. Um, mm. it, everything takes time these days, right? And we're, we don't have enough of it. But if we can exercise and listen to our books at the same time, uh, it's, a, it's a great solution. Um, we have a lot of online resources that I don't know if everybody's aware of. Um, uh, online, you can go to Universal Class. Um, you can take classes online for free, just Whoa. need your library card, and you can actually get uh, continuing education units out of it. They're, it's certified, um, so you can actually print off a certification um, when you're done that says, I have completed this. Um, one I'm looking forward to, to taking is the Google Analytics class, mm -hmm. so you can take a look at our website and kind of figure out where the hits are and who, who's using it and who's not. Um, huh. But anything from Microsoft Word to Excel, um, to, to Google Analytics, there's a, there's a class for almost everything. Wow, um, and it's free of charge. Free of charge. Every, all, almost everything we do here at the library is free of charge. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, currently our uh, one of our IT staff for the city of Cottonwood is running a Friday beginning computers program. Mm -hmm. So every Friday at two o'clock for a, a four month span, he's uh, he's got classes on beginning pro, uh, beginning computers. Wow. Um, I think next he'll be doing Facebook. Um, just kind oh. of a Facebook 101, you know, getting getting the, the next generation into that. So, right. Um, or the previous generation. The, pre the previous <laughs> generation. The next generation is already done with they're Facebook. Like, Facebook. Yeah. Wow. They're, they're yeah. done. That's old. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. There, so there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a lot going on. That's great. And and I know that you have the program with the Janimal who comes yes. in and teaches kids cartooning. That is a huge hit here. Yes, and, and he, you know, we did the Comic Expo two months ago. Um, if nobody knows what that is, you know, it, it, it was to promote uh, the pop culture in this area and, and the, the Marvel comics and whatnot. And the Janimal was a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. And then he comes in uh, once a month on Saturdays and teaches kids how to draw. Mm -hmm. um, and it's for everybody that, uh, you know, you don't think that you know how to draw. Uh, he might change your mind. And that is true. And he's a lot of fun, too, if you haven't met him. A lot of energy. Lot of yep. fun. And I know that in during a few months in the in the springtime, you have the Seed Savers program yes. that meets here. And then, of course, the, the, the Garden Club has some meetings here. Yes. And you have a meeting room 
that tell us a little bit about how people can use the meeting room. So we were fortunate enough, some of our staff before I got here uh, received an $18,000 grant uh, wow. to, to kind of upgrade our meeting space. New tables, new chairs, um, uh, all the technology that you need to have a, a nice presentation. Um, and all we require really is that you're uh, free to the public, whatever, whatever presentation you might be giving, you, you mm -hmm. can make that free to everybody to come. Uh, you're not in it for a profit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have uh, we have a Spanish group that meets in there. Um, we're looking. We're going to have Yavapai County is going to come and run some opioid classes in there mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, that's where we hold our computer classes. So um, we we really like to promote that space and, and have people think of that as a. I know that's a need in this community mm -hmm. is just as general meeting spaces and, sure. and to think of the library as a as an option there. Fantastic! That is great to know. So, if you if you want to offer a class mm -hmm. or a, some type of group, and if there's a free of charge, the Cottonwood Library can help you out with your meeting room. Absolutely. That's great. Now, all of this is available on the website. We can go to the website and we can find information on all of this. Yes, you can mm -hmm. go. Website um, is 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 uh, it's got a lot a lot of information on it. It's kind of hard to work through. Um, but uh, <laughs> go to it uh, and, and check it out. And then, if you have questions, let us know. Um, we're, we're also in the, in the process of going through a strategic plan, so um, we're trying to ask the community what it is that they want and what they need. Very nice. Um, we want to be you know, a resource for everybody and fill a lot of those gaps, not, you know, not just what can the library do um, for the library, but what can the library do to, to be more impactful in this community. That's really what we're looking for. Wow, that's excellent, Ryan. That's excellent. And the website is ctwpl. Dot info. Dot info. Dot info. Dot info. Or you can go to cottonwoodaz.gov and then they link you from from there okay. to to the website. So Good and to then know. that website's linked to all the other resources all that great we things have. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. Thank Congratulations, you for me. library manager, brand new. Give thank a you. hand. Thank you. <laughs> Ryan Bigelow, library manager for the Cottonwood Public Library. So much to see and do here. Make sure you check it out. We'll be right back with more of the experience. So don't go. Away. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride!
be the luckiest man alive. What did I tell you, baby? Awesome. I Thank love you. that. The Electric Swamp Poets, yeah. everyone. What a name. What a duo. Don Witcher Thank you. and Chris Berry. Yes, Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen, Thank for being you. here. Wow, what a wonderful sound you two produce. Thank you, you know, you, you often think duo, oh, maybe it'll, be. no, rich, full, <laughs> awesome. You don't need anybody else. That was fantastic. <laughs> well, you should hear us it. with the band, but yeah, we have, oh my gosh. we do yeah, fine just by ourselves. So. Oh, wow. I cannot imagine a better sound. Awesome. <laughs> I bow to you. <laughs> it's no <laughs> wonder you guys have been nominated for several things. I'm going to let Thank you tell you. the story, Don. Uh, well, let's see. Chris, we, we, uh, the, our last two albums that we put out were nominated for Best New Indie Blues Album of the Year mm. uh, in the oh. Memphis... Uh, uh, Chris is better at telling this, but he, you know. <laughs> um, we won the Northern Arizona Blues Challenge a couple years ago. We got to go to Memphis and play up there, and that was awesome. We got to play on Beale Street at the uh, Pig for a couple nights in a row, Ooh. and that, that was a good time. And uh, Chris and I have been playing together now for probably going on four years, I guess, yeah. now. And uh, Off and on. Uh, it's been awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just wonderful. We got a brand new album coming out, yep. too. It's, it's actually a compilation of two, our last two albums. Uh, that'll be out, um, well, sometime within the next two weeks. Whoa, yep. yeah, so brand it's, new. It's actually at the manufacturers right now. I talked to them this morning. Oh, so. getting the new printing. How exciting. <laughs> They're probably printing as we speak. Yeah, our yeah. last oh, yeah. batch sold oh, them. Yeah. We sold them like crazy. They just, they wow. just went like crazy. So. Okay, so what is yeah. this album called? What are you gonna uh, call that one is called Gator Tattoo. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Everything is kind of, we, we have this kind of, the one thing that, that Don and I have in common the is Mississippi River. We, the Mississippi River is embedded in just every single thing that we do. It's like we have one foot in the river and another foot in either the blues or Americana or, but that influence is real heavy with us. And we, even when we went back to Memphis, you know, we could tell when we get 100 miles away from Memphis, we could feel the pool of the river. And we oh, actually yeah. went down and. <laughs> Spent some Collected time bottles of Mississippi oh River water. Yeah, and Chris cried a little. Oh, oh, that's so sweet. Muddy water. It was awesome. What oh a great time. And Memphis was awesome. Uh, Memphis is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I have it's to so say. Cool. It was great. You know, oh, it, it really well, gets I was, here so. I was born in yeah. a little place called State Park, Illinois, which was right on the Mississippi River. Right. So all the way up to the time I was about eight or nine years old, that was my yard. That's where wow. I played. Yep. Wow, who's got so. the alligator tattoo? Uh, Chris has got it, but it's in a place he can't show ah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, you know, it's for some reason the alligator thing always ends up ends up. Well, the first the first album was Delta Flood that we did together, yep. which was the, the uh, duo album. Then uh, then the next album was called Feeding Time at the Alligator Ranch. All right. Yep. So that's where it automatically came up with Gator Tattoo. We found a tattoo of an alligator. Yeah, we he like, comes oh, up with cool. all this cool stuff. You see the posters this guy designs, man. Oh, I <laughs> bet. I mean, just the name. So give us some backstory. Where'd the name come from? You know, we were looking for a name, and we couldn't figure one out for a while. You know what we're going to do, and that kind of matched what was going on. And I think you came up with a name just well, one yeah, day. Well, yeah, what happened, where, where we it kind of came from, is I also spent a lot of time in the North Beach San, uh, area of San Francisco, which was the old home of the Beat Poets. And even though I was a little younger than they were, they, we still rubbed elbows with them. We were there every day. And, and so they had a real high standard of writing, and that was a very heavy influence on not just me, but all the other folks that lived mm -hmm. there at the time. And there's quite a few of them that had gone on to do really well. But um, so that influence of writing songs, it wasn't just, we didn't write Moon and June stuff. and. You know, the really easy love songs. It had to tell a story, you know. So it wasn't just it wasn't just a, a you know, a, just music. It had mm -hmm. to have a, a music, a story with music right. behind it. So. Poetry with yeah. music and, behind uh, it. So yeah. that was where the poet thing ah. came from. And then everybody we talked to said, "Man, you guys sound like you came right out of the swamp." Swamp. Ah. Like, okay, swamp <laughs> poet. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll do that. 
and, and remember that uh, that cigar box guitar I got. Yes. That's of course one of the things we do. We ah. do those things, so you know we can mix a lot of stuff, and it's fun. And we do a lot of duo gigs and a lot of band gigs. It's kind of like half and half. So. All right. Oh, what yeah. you got any gigs coming up next? Right. We do. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be at Big Daddy E's up in Chino Valley. Friday the 18th. Barbecue yep. in the blues. Uh, from okay. five to seven. On the first, we're going to be actually right back down here in the Verde Valley at the State Bar, and that's uh, I think. 8 to right 12 or something there. to that. Okay, June 1st. So and earlier that day, we're actually playing in Flagstaff, too. Uh, yep. Oh, my gosh. The, okay. The first what about Friday Art Walk, I think. Yep. Oh, great. So okay. we'll be... So we so we're, we're pretty much there. every right. weekend we're somewhere. Yep. Every weekend part. you're somewhere. So if we want to yep. look you up, do you post... Your, your gig list anywhere? We do. Yeah. If you um, look up on Facebook, you can look up the Electric Swamp Poets, and there's a page dedicated to that. You can also look on uh, Northern Arizona Blues Alliance, oh. which, which I'm all, also the president of, but we post all of our uh, blues gigs and everywhere we play it goes on there. So. Okay, Northern and, uh, look, Arizona Blues Alliance. Look up Don Witcher or Chris Berrien on either one of our pages. Yeah. Okay, right. that's good. We can yeah. find you everywhere. Yep. Look up Electric Swamp Poets on Facebook. Look up Don Witcher. Look up the Northern Arizona Blues Alliance. Yep. Yep. Oh my gosh. And YouTube. Look me up on YouTube. You'll and see YouTube? some videos of us. There you go. Yeah. What was the song you just played? That's oh, a John uh, Delta Kirby Flood, song, right? And, and Wait, uh, we didn't play Delta Flood. Oh, yet. the one we just played? Yeah. Oh, um, it was. It's a song called um, "Joy of My Life." Mm -hmm. Really, my, it's my wife's favorite song. She says yeah. she, she uh, likes this role. It's actually it's a John Fogerty song. Oh wow! Yeah. So wow. Isn't that a beautiful song? It, it is a beautiful he, song. He wrote it, but yeah. it's a I know. Song. And I love John Fogerty, but it's just him. so different for his style. Yeah, you know? especially the way so. it's done. Chris, yeah. you do a magnificent job with that song. <laughs> well, I recognize you it at all. you put your own into it, you know, mm -hmm. so you, you can't, you know, I wouldn't want to be a copy band where we try to sound exactly like everybody yeah. else. <laughs> right. Not, totally reinvented yeah, that song. Thing. Loved it. <laughs> What's the That's next awesome. song you're going to play? Okay, this is Delta Flood. Okay. And the funny thing about this, this is another Mississippi River song. Uh, and I called him up and I said, Don, I wrote the coolest song last night. I <laughs> dreamed it. I dreamed the whole thing. Ooh. I woke up, I wrote it down, and uh, he says, what is it about? And I said, the Mississippi River over flooded. And, you know, he says, have you watched the news? And I said, no. He goes, because last night the Mississippi over flooded. And, 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 he, and I said, wow. He was like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't write songs like that. <laughs> 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 but this is a beautiful song. This was the one that I, we named our first album that we did out. It was Delta Floods. That's so. great. Well, I'm excited yeah. to hear it. Thank well, you, thank gentlemen, you. for being yes. here. Thank you, gentlemen. Really appreciate thank it, Don. Always wonderful to thank see you. you. Chris, pleasure to meet you. I know thank I'll you. see you again. Thank Chris you. Berry, Don Witcher, the Electric Swamp Poets. Check them out on Facebook and the Northern Arizona Blues Alliance. Thank you very much for watching the Verde Valley yes. Experience. We really appreciate you. You can check us out at VerdeValleyTV.com, also on our Facebook page. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> There's a hurricane blowing, calling my heart Thunder and lightning and shaky ground Went to check the levee, but the levee was gone And now there's six foot of Mississippi River through Climb up to the rooftop, spread the alarm. Better get a pie, cause you might die. There's catfish and gators down in my front yard.